ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नमस्ते so in the last episode shankaracharya talks about unembodiedness as a symptom of liberation that after liberation one does not need the gross or subtle bodies but that one can have a body of pure consciousness and this exists in a world of pure consciousness this is the inferior brahman the secondary brahman brahman with qualities saguna brahman or also known as shiva loka devi loka the pure creation and so on so many different names but it is the same state of turiya tita that awareness of awareness that never goes away never gets covered by anything else this is the result of enlightenment but enlightenment is not the result of anything that's what today's reading is going to be about since liberation is different from the result of work it being unrelated to virtue and vice Therefore liberation is the same as brahman about which this deliberation is started had liberation been spoken of in the scriptures as being supplementary to action and had it been asserted as a thing to be achieved it would become impermanent in that case liberation would become some sort of an excellent product amidst a horde of above mentioned products of work standing in a graded order but all who believe in liberation admit it to be eternal thus since liberation is the same as brahman it is not proper to talk of brahman as though it formed a factor in some action liberation is the same in quality and also experientially as brahman therefore it is eternal similar to brahman it is uncaused it is not a result of cause and effect because that's duality brahman is non-dual therefore the attainment of brahman also is not a result of any kind of work any kind of cause how is that because it already is when we say aham brahmasmi i am brahman this is an already existing condition which we have not recognized we think i am the body i am the mind i am my possessions my titles my designations my qualities and so on but all this is maya maya has a beginning and an end it is the result of some cause it is the result of work karma and that's why in the upanishads there is a list of graded levels of enjoyment by different types of beings according to their past work and we were over this back in the series on katopanishad the experience of a liberated soul is like thousands and thousands of times more enjoyable than even being a great demigod so this is why when people talk about attaining enlightenment or becoming enlightened or going to brahman going to nibbana sometimes the buddhists say it's all nonsense there is no where to go there's nothing to change no object to act on as a kind of work because the self and brahman are identical the self is never 
an object of any action. It's imperceivable, uninferable, unrelated to anything else as a cause, as an effect, as an object. It can only be a subject because it is the perceiver. How can you know that by which all else is known? Sage Yajnavalkya says to his wife, in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. How can the knower be known? So this is the thing about Brahman that people don't get. See, we're so conditioned to thinking in terms of subject and object, doer and action, uh, all these dualities, that when it comes time to think about Brahman, we think about it in the same way. But that's just a matter of habit. That's not reality. The reality is that Brahman is transcendental, and it's not the effect of any cause, and neither is realization. Besides, the following texts show liberation as coming immediately after the knowledge of Brahman and thereby they deny any activity in the interval. Anyone who knows Brahman becomes Brahman. Mundakopanishad 3.2.19 When that Brahman, the basis of all causes and effects, becomes known, all the results of his, that is, the aspirant's actions, become exhausted. Mundakopanishad 2.2.8 one who knows the bliss that is the very nature of Brahman ceases to have any fear from anything. Taitariyapanishad 2.9 O Janaka, you have certainly attained Brahman that is fearlessness. Brihadaranyakopanishad 4.2.4 4. It knew only itself as I am Brahman, thereby it became all. Brihadaranyakopanishad 1.4.10 Then what delusion and what sorrow can there be for that seer of unity? Ishopanishad 7. And so on. So Brahman is one, non-dual, transcendental, beyond cause and effect, not a product of anything, not an object of anything. And when Brahman is simply recognized, it's already realized, even though we talk about self-realization as if it's something that happens, huh? then it would have a cause. Then it would be a product. Then it would not be eternal or changeless. See, and that defeats the whole idea of non-dual Brahman. We can't think about Brahman in terms of ordinary objects, cause and effect, and so on. Because simply by the knowledge that I am Brahman, one becomes free from all karma. Now, that doesn't mean that it's okay to go, you know, do evil acts, because it's not. What it means is that one has recognized one's own real nature as Brahman. And because one sees one's own self as Brahman, one understands all other selves are also Brahman. Therefore, there is never any cause of grief or lamentation for anybody, especially oneself. Krishna teaches this to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. There is never any cause for lamentation. Even if your duty, according to Vedic Varnashram system, Dharma, Svadharma, one's own activities, one's own work, may involve doing things that are really distasteful, not to mention difficult, such as Arjuna having to fight the battle of Kurukshetra or such as a spiritual aspirant having to give up certain things huh, to attain a high state of meditation. 
then uh, we should not hesitate. We should not argue. We should not misunderstand this to be some kind of a mundane process with a cause and a result. That would turn Brahman into an object. And it can't be an object. Brahman is always the subject. I am Brahman. It doesn't say, the Mahavakya doesn't say, I'm going to become Brahman someday. <laughs> I am Brahman, hum Brahmasmi. So this is the real nature of Brahman. And this is the real nature of the self as well. So also one should refer to the following text for the denial of any duty in between the realization of Brahman and becoming all. While realizing this self as that Brahman, the seer Vamadev knew I was Manu and I was the son. Brihadaranyakopanishad 1.4.10 This is just like the sentence, standing there he sings, where it can be understood that the man has no other activity in between his standing and singing. And the following and similar other texts show that the result of the knowledge of Brahman is nothing but the removal of the obstacles to liberation. You indeed are our father who have ferried us across Nescience to the other shore. Prashnopanishad 6.8 For it has been heard from the adorable ones like yourself that the knower of the self goes beyond sorrow. Sir, such as I am, I am sorrowful. May you, O venerable sir, ferry me across nescience. Chandogyopanishad 7.1.3 The adorable Sanat Kumara showed the other shore of nescience to him, that is, to Narada, who had become free from defects. Chandogyopanishad 7.26.2 there is also in evidence the aphorism of the great teacher Gotama, supported by reasoning. Liberation is possible since the earlier ones in the series of sorrow, birth, impulsion to virtue and vice, defects, for example, attachment, repulsion, delusion, etc., and false knowledge, get destroyed in the reverse order on the destruction of the immediately succeeding ones. Nyaya Sutra 1.1.2 And the removal of false ignorance follows from the knowledge of the unity of the individual self and Brahman. Now, in the previous argument, the opponent has put forward the obstacle that even though people hear of Brahman and the self being one, like they don't get it. Their sorrow is not removed. They still suffer from desire and so on, partiality, etc. But this is actually not the case because the vrittikaras misunderstand Brahman to be an object, to be an effect, and self-realization to be a product of some cause. They can't realize Brahman. Therefore, one should understand Brahman properly. Then when one hears, Tattvamasi, you are Brahman. One is released from all suffering and all ignorance. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.